immunotherapy with CAR T cells induces complete remission in only a minority of patients with CLL. Now the good news is that when CRs do occur, they do tend to be uh, durable. So we're here to talk about a pilot study of anti-CD19 CAR T cells with ibrutinib, and this is to test the hypothesis that pre and concurrent treatment would enhance the complete response rate. So to do this, I'm with Dr. Sar Gill, who is an MD and a PhD, uh, an assistant professor in the Perlman School of Medicine and the Abramson Cancer Center at the University of Pennsylvania. So first off, why CAR T cells combined with ibrutinib? Okay, so what we noticed is that when in our previous trial, when we uh, treated patients with CAR T cells alone, there were a few complete remissions, uh, but those were durable. In fact, those were the first patients that we treated at the University of Pennsylvania uh, in 2010. And some of those patients are still in a complete remission with circulating CAR T cells, which is very impressive. And wow. so. We wanted to see if we can expand on, um, on those um, sterling results by combining with a well-tolerated drug that came on the market a few years after the, um, after the initial results with CAR T cells, and that's ibrutinib. So ibrutinib is, is available to uh, a lot of patients. It's easily given, it's, it's well-tolerated, but the, um, the issue with ibrutinib is that very few patients achieve a complete remission. And furthermore, the patients need to continue taking the drug forever, it would seem. Uh, so what we wanted to do is to combine our um, advances with those that, that uh, were developed by others and, and by the pharmaceutical industry in the form of a pill to see if we could derive a therapy that um, achieved deeper emissions and that uh, was well tolerated. And you're hoping for kind of a synergistic mechanism of action? Right, that's, that's exactly right. So in fact in two papers that came out of the University of Pennsylvania, um, just over a year ago, we found that there was synergy between uh, ibrutinib and CAR T cells in two different models of uh, two different mouse models of um, B cell malignancies. One of which was CLL, and furthermore, one of those um, studies was done using patient samples from patients treated with ibrutinib for several months, and it showed that patients who had been um, on ibrutinib for at least six months had better quality T cells from which we could make uh, great CAR T cells, and so. That provided the rationale for one of the inclusion criteria on the trial, which was that patients need to have been on ibrutinib for at least six months. To us, what that, um, what that implied is that we would, um, in all likelihood, be able to make plentiful and well-functioning CAR T cells from the blood. And so, in fact, that's what we found. We found that um, all the patients that we treated have um, easily manufactured the target dose of, of T cells, which was 500 million uh, CAR T cells. Per patient, um, and that, um, and, and and so that was the manufacturing aspect. So, um, as you know, any early phase study has a, a component of feasibility. So we wanted to so show that we could manufacture that, and, and that was very easy. I think another important element that that we found um, in CLL being a, usually a relatively slowly progressive malignancy, there is time usually to manufacture patients to. Um, to bring the patients to, to Philadelphia to manufacture them. Some of them will go home. Not, not all of them are from, are from Pennsylvania. And so um, we felt quite comfortable that these patients were controlled on ibrutinib. They were not progressing. None of them were in a complete response on ibrutinib, um, but none of them were progressing on ibrutinib. And so that gave us a lot of confidence that we could manufacture the T cells and, um, and have the patients remain stable during the time that it would, that it would take. So that was another element of the feasibility, and that, that proved to be very, uh, very doable. Um, and so that's the feasibility part. Then when it comes to the uh, safety part, we found something else that was interesting and again was based on, on some of our preclinical results that we published uh, last, uh, last year. And that is, interestingly, um, adding ibrutinib to a CAR T cell approach. Uh, we did that initially in mice, and we, of course we've now done that in patients seems to reduce the production of cytokines from the T cells. So it actually reduces what's known as the cytokine release syndrome, CRS, which has become the most, um, certainly the most well-known and, and I think the most important side effect of CAR T cell therapy. But one thing that was important for us to demonstrate in, in patients is that adding ibrutinib would not diminish the response rates. It was, it was critical to ensure that it would increase the response rates and it would have been nice if it also reduced the toxicity. So when you put those two together, we were pretty excited about this, about this study design. So we talked about feasibility, we talked about the, the theoretical uh, safety, and then what happened is uh, when we started treating our patients is that all of them developed cytokine release syndrome, 
but it was um, in the majority of patients was mild cytokine release syndrome. Some patients did not even need to be admitted to the hospital. They had fevers at home. They were closely monitored. They had no biochemical abnormalities. They they were cardiovascularly stable, and so um, and then it was it self remitted. So so it showed us possibly that ibrutinib did um, in humans what it also did in the mice, which is to make the CRS a lot more tolerable. And then when it comes to efficacy, we started with, I think it's important to point out that we started with patients who um, achieved a partial response to ibrutinib. So a lot of these patients had, all of these patients had um, CLL in the marrow, ranging from 10 to 50% marrow involvement with CLL. Um, some of them had lymphadenopathy or splenomegaly. Not all of them did have those. Um, and, uh, and in general, um, as I said, there were partial responders on ibrutinib. So the disease was control. And what we found in terms of efficacy is that um, all but one patient achieved a complete response uh, in the bone marrow. So had no valuable disease, no valuable CLL in the bone marrow based on um, very sensitive tests certainly based on, on um, histology in, in the path lab, but also based on nine color flow cytometry. And in, the, um, in seven patients in whom we tested um, minimal residual disease using deep sequencing, so a very sensitive assay, four of those had no evidence of, um, of any minimal residual disease at all by, by this very sensitive assay at, at three months. In fact, most of those already at one month had no, no uh, evidence of disease. And we're learning that no minimal residual disease is important. I think it's very important. I think we're seeing that in all in all sorts of hematologic malignancies. It just speaks to the depth of response. Um, data that will come out in, in future that we haven't looked at yet will tell us also about the persistence of the CAR T cells, which we've found to be important as well. Um, and so when you put all those results together, you find that this is a, a well-tolerated, very feasible, um, and, and it would seem with relatively short follow-up, a highly efficacious approach to treating CLL. So what do you think is the future here? I mean, how many patients have you done and are you continuing to enroll patients? Uh, we are continuing. So we, based on these um, quite exciting results, we expanded the trial from an initial uh, cohort of 12 to 25. We have um, 10 patients left to treat on that study. And uh, once we get to 25, the, the, study will, the study will complete and, and, and will firm up, I hope will firm up the results that we're presenting here today. The initial patients that we recruited onto the study had, um, of course, uh, very high risk CLL. They had progressed through several prior therapies before going on to ibrutinib, and they had um, the, the usual um, adverse risk factors such as p53 uh, mutation or 17p deletion. I think the future will um, probably allow us to bring this therapy um, earlier in the course of treatment for CLL. I think these days when you have CLL you can start an easily uh, tolerated, uh, one of several easily tolerated um, oral drugs that, that controls the disease. Um, most of those drugs do not eradicate the disease and so if we have the opportunity to then take our time make uh, CAR T cells and then hopefully eradicate the disease uh, and I think our hope of, of that is based on the deep um, MRD responses that we have, then maybe there is the possibility of, um, of um, not needing to treat anymore. So um, ibrutinib or some other drug for several months followed by CAR T cells followed by observation perhaps with, with uh, taking the patient off ibrutinib one day. So the first line combination approach and then obviating the need for hopefully chronic, for chronic therapy. therapy. Yes, exactly. Wow, that's really good. And when will you be presenting some additional information? At, uh, six months? Can we wait? For, is it, it will be a year? How long? Do you yes, know? I think so. Um, our first patient has now is now over a year. Our second patient is just about at a year follow up, and um, I, I think in, in it, within about six months we'll have more results with um, a larger number of patients, longer follow up, and um, and a. Um, more extensive MRD analysis as well. Thank you, Dr. Yell. I appreciate your time this morning. And also for uh, Ash, please look around uh, online and in print at Ash Clinical News. I'm Rick McGuire.